Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another War Tales guide video. Today I'm going to show you exactly how to turn extreme difficulty into easy mode with a one-man trade army. So without further ado, let's crack into it. All this really requires is a bit of patience and careful exploration of the world and a bit of time and planning. Um, and yeah, essentially you're good to go. But right, so what we're gonna do to start off our starting composition, we are gonna go with men escorting merchants who lost their employer because we want the we want to start with the additional 150 crowns. And we're going to go with long walks because we're gonna be doing a lot of walking in this campaign. Another one you could go for is sale price of items increased by 10%. This, if you wanna start increasing your profits more quickly, uh, this is certainly the way to go. But if you're more into, if you're, if you're ready to take a little bit of a hit in the early game and you wanna plan more for the late game, then I would say, Critical damage or constitution increased by 10%. And yeah, this one, I don't I don't think would be... Uh, sorry, cunning fighters, I, I don't think is necessarily useful. But yeah, for this particular one, I, I'm going to recommend use to long walks because we, we're going to be doing a ton of, um, ton of walking here. All right, and then for our um, debuff... we're going to go with a somewhat meek appearance. It's just out of these, I, I think it's, it's always the best one to go for. Um, yeah. Um, e even though we're going to be carrying a lot of goods, uh, it's a little bit of a handicap, but it's not anything too, too extreme. And then we are going to go with adaptive. So uh, this it could potentially work on region locked exploration, but it will be a lot more difficult on region locked exploration, I think. But uh, yeah, this is tailored a little bit more for adaptive exploration, which I'm going to be doing in Iron Man Extreme Challenge Let's Play. I think I'm going to be starting it maybe New Year's Eve and then marathoning it New Year's Day and the day after. Maybe that's a sort of... Um, what i'm looking at but I, I have another method that's actually even better than this one i think but uh for today's uh yeah i'm, I'm gonna save that for the uh the live stream but uh this one is certainly very strong as well and a little bit a little bit um are you an empire uh, a little bit more on the straight and narrow Whereas the other one is uh, not necessarily um, playing by the rules. <laughs> um, anyway, all right. So we're going to name this guy Jack of All Trades. Because, well, Jack of All T, good enough. Uh, we're going to change his utility to Wrath. Um, we're not going to need the heal. Usually I go with heal. And then for his traits, we are going with... Where is it? Uh, we're going to go with Volunteer uh, to reduce his wages. And we're going to go with Stocky. And then the my go-to for the negative trait is pretty much always the... Uh, I don't know why Stupid doesn't show up sometimes. That is weird. Okay, if we click off of him and can click on him again. There it is. Yeah, that's weird. A little bit of a bug there or, or something. And then the rest of the companions uh, really doesn't matter because we are going to be pretty well disbanding them right away. All right, I had to quick restart because I forgot I started the last one and I forgot to upgrade my pony. The other, so we definitely want Stocky. And then I believe... Uh, add to the constitution because that also increases carrying capacity and uh, we'll go depressed that's fine for the pony uh, the other characters it doesn't really matter too much uh, I want to keep them with a sing uh, with double weapons because uh, that'll I, I believe the double weapons are worth more than just the single weapon which uh, basically we will be disbanding 
these characters will only be keeping uh, jack of all trades here. A mercenary's life is never easy. So, our initial goals here are number one, collect resources everywhere and anywhere. And our jack of all trades, we will be switching his profession constantly to whatever is needed at the uh, at the time because those resources can be converted into equipment which can be sold for profit also fishing things like that food that we collect can be sold for profit as well so uh stealing goods um can be sold for profit however i would say uh when you're stealing make sure to keep your wanted level as low as possible because we're basically going to be avoiding fights like the plague and when we do get into fights we'll be running from them with the with the exception of this this first fight we'll be uh we'll be uh fighting it out with our companions here but or our starting companions that is but yeah that's your initial goal is just scavenge resources everywhere second goal is while you're collecting those resources explore and unlock knowledge points uh, that is um, really crucial to um, lowering your um, your upkeep cost and your food consumption which are, are two of the most important things and also you want to increase your ability to traverse the wor world more quickly and traverse the world uh, without uh, fatigue bonuses, but yeah, I'll, I'll go over some of the skills and traits that I've chosen later on. And then after that, uh, your next goal will be, sorry, I was trying to focus on the fight here. Just get through this fight as quickly as possible. Uh, next, uh, next is forge gear. And build camp structures. Obviously, I, I mean, this is all very, very basic stuff. But these are your initial goals to the campaign, right? Uh, next, um, build a modest bankroll. Uh, the whole idea of um, the early game will be just going with one guy. Cutting costs as much as possible. And building up a small bankroll and then what you'll want to do is begin recruiting ponies so that you can increase your carrying capacity and start trading goods from town to town and we'll go over shortly what uh what the trade route looks like and where uh, where the best places are to go but essentially that's your early game how you want to get things moving uh to get things started but anyway, I'll probably edit out this uh, little bit of combat because it's, um, yeah, a little bit boring. All right, easy game, easy life. All right, so we don't want to repair or heal any of these guys. Uh, they're, we're going to be disbanding them in a moment. And what we want to do also is strip them down of all their resources. No need to repair the armor and whatnot because you're gonna get the same sale price, I believe, for armor that 
is whether it's damaged or not, it's still going to be the same sale price. So, all right, let's quick stop at the stables. And it always, it's never a bad idea to stop at um, these locations because there's usually like a little bit of hemp or something like that. And, and like I said, this is all about foraging resources and, and things like that. So we want to get our supply of resources up as quickly as possible. We will... Sell all of this stuff. It's a little bit tempting to pick up a pony right now. Because it does drastically increase our uh carry capacity and we do have do have a fair bit of money so you know what i'm gonna go ahead and do that um just want to look for whoever's got the uh the best carrying capacity i believe it was the first guy 54 so let's recruit him uh not to mention uh we're getting a pretty good deal here uh we're getting the pony plus a free set of horseshoes and my typical strategy for my ponies is I usually keep the horseshoes on them when I'm trying to traverse the world quickly. But when I when I need a little bit of extra carrying capacity, I go with the saddlebags. So saddlebags is something I usually uh, unlock at some point in the, uh, the for the tinkerer. All right, so let's head to Stromcap. And in fact, why don't we, before we even head in there, let's just talk to these guys. We can dismiss them. And this is just in order to save money. And the nice thing about adaptive exploration is the enemy groups that we're fighting against will be around the same size but as i said earlier we're gonna be fight or we're gonna be avoiding fights for the most part uh once you get like a little bit better gear for your jack of all trades here then you can start thinking about uh fighting animals It'd be really easy like wolves and boars boars especially but uh, we'll get to that in a little while all right, let's uh, take a look at the market, see what's available. Come, come. Um, we've got some ways. leather here and some hemp. And make him a thief. Um, yeah, we'll steal the hemp because we're going to convert that into rope here uh, shortly. And we'll pick up a little bit of leather. Uh, first thing we want to unlock here is run. Uh, I'll go over uh, a little bit of the skills later on. But I, I mean, it's pretty straightforward what we're doing here. Uh, just basically using jack of all trades here to switch professions to um, whatever we need at the moment. And it would be nice. What do we need for a rags? We need a, one more leather. And what do we need for a targ? Okay, we need wood and iron ore. Um, yeah, we do want to get him equipped as, as much as possible because there will be some fights that we can win. Come, come. Um, but I mean, for the way. most part, you'll want to... If need be, you'll have to run from fights, but if you have enough gold and influence or uh, food on hand, you can distract animals with food, surplus food, and you can um, talk your way out of confrontations with influence and gold with, um, with, with bandits and whatnot. I mean, it's not always the case, but... You want to do that rather than getting into fights because getting into fights, we're going to be, we're going to struggle with just one guy in the fights. Uh, like I said, unless you're fighting animals, once you get a little bit better equipment, I mean, this, um, this set of rags will make him a little bit tougher, a little bit, um, a little bit better in combat. And then you can use my anvil. let's. Just, I can also repair your armor. Uh, that's oh, weird that we need to repair. We just forged that. 
Um, and we will sell this. I can also. All right, let's do a little bit of tinkering. And we'll need the uh, the rope at some point. Uh, we'll want to want to make use of pittens. Uh, pittens are going to be really important. Getting the hitching post built, uh, super important. Getting the cooking pot, um, very important as well. And uh, the camp chest, not as important, but uh, you can build it anyway. Um, but yeah, these uh, the tent probably won't need. When we're resting, we'll essentially want to have him. Actually, let's uh, let's forge a fish hook for the time being, so that we can do a little bit of fishing. Fish um, is going to be one of our ways to make money initially. And let's take a look here. Uh, rationing, frugality. Let's go with a rationing to start off, reduce our food. So we've got our food consumption down to 12 already. So that's not too bad. Our wages is down to th is at 35, which is pretty reasonable. Um, we should very easily be able to scavenge uh, more resources uh, than that. So, um, all right. Let's just buy a little bit of salt and a little bit of grain. And let's... Oh, these chickens are on sale, so I can't, uh... I can't turn down a deal. Um... Alright, you know what? We'll go with that. That's, uh... That'll get us... Yeah, we'll, we'll be, um... We'll be in good shape for quite a while here. Food wise, just reorganize my inventory a little bit. Just put the fish hook down there for now. All right, let's uh, let's get to it. Let's go um, do a little bit of foraging. Usually, the first place I go, one of the first places I go to, is up here at the windmill. Um, just want to be a little bit careful. So the trick to to this avoiding confrontations is to make sure that you have a fair bit of run. You don't want to use usually when I'm 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 exploring I'm just like or or moving across the world I'm just like sprinting everywhere trying to get at um wherever I need to go as quickly as possible but in this uh, because we're avoiding fights for the first few hours at least of the uh, of the playthrough we'll basically um. You, basically, you want to keep some of your some of your sprint available to escape from uh, enemies when uh, when the time comes for it. And you, you want to be very careful when you're chopping wood. Ah, shit. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is why uh, on extreme certain occupations: chopping wood, blacksmithing. Mining, and I'm trying to think of some of the other ones. Uh, will cause injuries if you screw up. So you want to be a little bit on the careful side. But um, the way that you'll want to deal with injuries in this, again, and this is uh, to save, save money, is you can unlock the ability to... Uh, build a brace, which, um, shoot, I'm not sure if we find that somewhere or if he can. Anyway, if you find the recipe for the brace, I'm trying to think if that's uh, where to, where we get that or if we can just unlock it. All right. Anyway, um, I recommend not talking to these guys and just taking the knowledge point here. Um, because if you talk to them, it will trigger trigger her, and you, you've got to resolve that situation. And we don't really 
want to deal with that um, initially. All right. Um, let's head down to the south here and maybe do a little bit of fishing. If we can. Is there... Okay, yeah, there's a fishing, fishing hole down there. All right. And you want to be careful when you're when you're resting in the world. Um, you want to be careful to have the danger level really low. Um, okay, before we rest, let's take a look at what um, I'm gonna go with frugality, um, endurance training, really important. Um, weight training. This can probably wait, especially because we recruited that pony artful dodgers is kind of important because the the more quickly we can steal the we can make profit for that so i'm gonna i'm gonna unlock that initially um but endurance training probably the next one we want to go for and let's just rest it up quick I was hoping to find a little bit more iron ore, but yeah, I think um, I think you guys are kind of getting the gist of what um, what the main goal here initially is: just collect resources and explore, and change him from occupation to occupation, whatever is needed at the time. Um, later on, you'll be able to specialize him, but the Starting off, the main goal is to get a bankroll going and get our carrying capacity up while also reducing our food consumption and reducing our wages as much as possible so that we can establish our trade network. And once we establish our tra trade network, uh, it's essentially just building an even bigger bankroll to the point where we can start saving resources and preparing to recruit our actual party all right beautiful there's some iron ore over here very nice very nice just explore a little bit oh there's some iron ore over here as well and god damn yeah see so the thing is when you <laughs> when you play this uh once you get further into the game, right, like your you can increase the how long your run speed lasts. So you get sort of like used to that, right? And then when you fire up a new game, your run speed is really slow or it depletes more quickly. And yeah, anyway, that's my excuse for caught there anyway um we'll want to stick to the roads for the most part uh, mainly because we'll be able to travel more quickly and it's much less dangerous traveling on the roads but you always want to keep your eyes peeled for for enemies and just try and avoid those fights um all right well i'm gonna heal his wound because we can't do certain tasks without uh, while he's uh while he's injured so um better to repair there keep the medicine as reserve and let's just forge him a targ um what am i doing here switch to blacksmith oh son of a okay we need one leather to do that Pick up our leather here. Come, come. Take a look at my wares. Ah, uh, dang it. All right, good, good. All right, let's go endurance training. 
And you, sir, let's equip the Targ. So he should be strong enough to take on one-on-one -on -one a wolf or a boar, no problem. And initially at level one, we should only be facing off against one of them at a time. So uh, the next thing we want to get built is the cooking pot so that we can start cooking uh, our, our bread. Uh, bread will be... Uh, You'll be able to make a profit with bread if you're if you're stealing one of the components to it. So if you're stealing either the salt or the grain, usually what I do is I steal the grain and then purchase the salt. And basically it's costing you... Okay, so this is... Oh, actually there's two of them. So two of them I'd rather not get into a fight with. If it's just one, take it on. But... Yeah, with two of them. That might be because I have two ponies. I'm not sure. But anyway, I, I'm going to show you guys now. Um, ah, shoot, I can't resist. Gotta, how we get into the neighboring province before I skip ahead and show you guys the, um, the actual trade route. But I, I, think, I think I've pretty well explained everything. Ooh, another thing to note is initially you'll want to keep your character at the campfire because we need to get our happiness up. If we're retreating from fights, it's we're going to we're going to lose happiness. So um it's really important to um really important to to get that um that influence and your happiness to a point where it's uh, safe. You're not going to run into danger of losing your party member. So another way to get happiness up as well is uh, with uh, with alcohol. Drinking alcohol during rests uh, helps out also. And then every time you pay your companions, uh, you do get a bonus of three, three happiness. But all right, I'll show you how we get into the neighboring province without actually having to Pay the um, pay the fine. Oh, good God, might as well. I mean, since we're here, we might as well do a bit of fishing. There's a little bit of hemp here as well. Switch our boy over. Ah, shoot. We need a uh, need a fish hook. Uh, we'll forge two of them, and then also forge a couple of pittons. Um, actually, maybe I should have forged a, uh, a lockpick, but anyway. And we unlocked another knowledge point. Um, smooth talk, feet makers. All right, yeah, the... Weight training is one that we'll want to get. Uh, smooth talk. We won't need that for quite a while because we won't be rec uh, recruiting any. Smooth talk unlocks uh, fast training. Um, so not super important. Career plans. You definitely want to unlock this before he levels up. But he'll level up relatively slowly because, as I mentioned earlier, we're avoiding getting into fights. So um, I... Actually, might save this knowledge point for when we get back into um, when we get into the neighboring town. Um, all right, quick, do some fishing here, and don't worry too much about the the lost experience in in between, like your professions. Um, you'll pretty much become an apprentice uh, of pretty much most of them uh, fairly quickly as you start to do more things at a time. But it's just more valuable in the early game to be able to switch between professions. If you have somebody that can do pretty, pretty much everything, uh, it's very easy to accumulate resources and these resources can very easily pay for our wages and our food consumption so even even with the two ponies 
All right, a little spirit gold here. Yeah, there's usually some ore outside the mine here. Pick that up. As uh, the next thing we'll want to want to forge for our companion is a uh, is an axe, and we'll we'll want to get him better armor as well. But I believe he can't get the uh, stronger armor until he's level two. So. Um, Probably some snow wires up here. I thought I saw some over there, but oh yeah, there's there it is. We want to be careful here because the woods enemies can be hidden in the trees very easily. And we want to save some of our run speed if we need to get out of dodge. But again, if you do get caught and you can't bribe your way out of it or distract your way out of it, just run from the fight. Uh, unless it's a fight you feel like you can win, uh, which early game is going to be somewhat few and far between. But like I said, once you get better gear for your for your companion, you will be able to uh, take on enemy um, enemy animals, boars and 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 wolves, with relative ease. And my, my choice for the companion, the guy that I kept, was the warrior. I just, because I he can be very tanky with a shield and axe, and it's hard to take down. So, it's usually what I go with. There are some resources up there, but... But yeah, this is how you get into the neighboring province. Without uh, without paying the toll, and I believe there there are ways to get into the other provinces using the pittance also, but um, this first province is probably the only one you need to do it with, just because the um, w once you get going, you will um, you'll have plenty of cash to work with um, once once you get your trade network established. But as you can see here. Um, just basically picking up random resources and exploring. We very quickly unlocked a number of... Oh, shit. So here we can negotiate with him. We could try and fighting fighting him. It's one versus one. We do have okay gear, but I think it's just better. It's only nine gold and two influence. Uh, the other option is to run from the fight, but the running from the fight, everything's going to get damaged. And we're going to end up injured. So it'll cost us at least 20, 20 gold for the medicine. And whatever it costs to repair the the, the armor and whatnot. And I, I mean, like, if you're feeling confident, if you feel like you can win the fight, by all means, go ahead. It's just one level one versus one level one. This is one we probably could win. But I'm not going to risk it. Um, I'm just going to play it safe here. Uh, if I was playing on my own, I probably would have fought that and just see how it went but just because i'm sort of um giving guys an outline of how to go about this early on um yeah just avoid avoid the fight initially it only costs us nine gold to influence but okay so here we've got a wolf should be easy easy peasy and uh this is a great way for us to supplement our our uh, food as well as killing these animals. Usually on these maps, or at least sometimes on these maps when you're fighting just one enemy, um, there will be like a spear or something, and you can use that to your advantage, but this map does not seem to have that. Um, all right, well... Might as well get up here and strike first. And good thing is, with our warrior here, we do have protection. And because you're going to be fighting few and far between, you usually should be going into fights with plenty of valor points. To make things um, nice and easy. And here we go. Yeah, we're... Because you want to minimize the damage that you're taking as much as possible uh, because the more damage you take the more expensive it is to repair yeah i think we definitely could have probably killed that bandit um 
another thing to note, uh, I know I've covered this, uh, probably covered this quite a bit before, but repairs, uh, you want to do them, repairs and healing, you usually want to do them in town because it's a little bit cheaper to do it that way. But yeah, let's stop into Cortia. And uh, there we have it. Already, we've unlocked a number of knowledge points. We're very close to leveling up to level two. We've got okay gear for our companion. We'll be able to unlock more gear and we're accumulating resources very quickly. And we're already at the stage where we can probably start trading goods between Cortia and Stromcap for now. So we can use this little trade route. But again, you want to explore, scoop up the resources, and unlock the knowledge points. But that um, that's going to do it for this early part of the, uh, the video. And in the second half, I'm going to show you guys um, what, uh, what the campaign looks like a few hours in. All right, so this is a number of hours into the campaign. And as you can see, there, there's still quite a bit of exploration that could be done. But I just essentially decided to... I mean, my knowledge is fairly good for the time being. We've got run, rationing, weight training, frugality, uh, feet makers, artful dodgers, endurance training, career plans, restoration, intimidation... And Season Travelers are what I've unlocked there. Um, the This stuff is not as important. But in terms of our paths, I've gone Endurance Run, Animal Instinct, and Aestheticism as my feats under that one. Uh, long Distance Running, Cooperative, Transporters, Suppliers, Skillful Mercenaries, and definitely we want... To unlock <coughs> trade horses. Ah, that one's super valuable. I didn't realize it was there uh, until, um, yeah, a little bit later. But anyway, yeah, these are all very important. The order that you unlock these, totally up to you. But um, all of these top ones, very valuable. Um, and then we've got Nimble Fingers. We're going pretty slow with the um, Crime and Punishment. Like I said, we're playing this one fairly straight for the most part. Uh, endurance Run. Animal instinct, reduce that animal aggression, and again, aestheticism are the uh, the traits there. Oh, and strict rationing. I guess like I that's the one I started with. So uh, those are the traits. Now this is the this is the trade route. Essentially, so I haven't gotten the exact numbers. I I started my balance sheet, and then as I was um, sort of recording the sale uh, the purchase price and the sale price of all of the different um different areas um i, I started accumulating different bonuses and whatnot so I, i've got to at some point once i unlock everything like i'll, I'll do a follow-up video i think on, on trade and do the exact where where the exact prices are uh, the best prices uh for everything but essentially roughly um what i believe right now as per my initial research is Cortia is I mean you basically want to buy everything everywhere right you you want to scoop up the resources and then sell them um where, where they're going to be the most profitable so in Cortia uh you want to sell scrolls and silver uh, is where you want to sell those goods um essentially Stromcap Marheim and uh, sorry, Strom, uh, Stromcap and Marheim are essentially your hub cities where you're going to be picking things up. Um, you can sell, if you really want, at Marheim. You can sell gems at Marheim, but you'll actually get a little bit of a better price for gems at Bronwick Town. But um, basically, the places that you're going to sell, you're going to be picking up goods everywhere. Marheim, Stromcap, Ortia, um the uh, uh sorry um saint septimus district market and new Asheville. um down here is courtia like i said scrolls and silver you sell those there at new ash new ass Asthel, you'll want to sell pottery spices and gems 
And then at St. Septimus's Market, you can sell cloth, amber, spices, and pelts. And that's essentially the way you want to go about it. Um, and then before you sell your goods, you'll want to get yourselves the seed sausage recipe. So we're in the north here. Uh, we're about to sell some goods. So we're going to eat this. Uh, if you get the delicious recipe, you get 15% increase of your trade goods. Um, the regular recipe just gives you 10%, but still pretty solid. And uh, let's just rest it up. Beautiful. And so if you're wondering where to get this recipe, it's right here at the Tavern of Fortunes Made. Uh, if you speak to the barkeep, he's the one who has the recipe. He's also got a recipe for this. Um, oh, I, you know what? Mead, pike, seed sausage, and Goosenberg wine. Um, we'll have to, um, I'm going to have to get, actually, you know what? We'll purchase that right now. Um, though I don't know where we get mead pike from. So um, I'll have to search for that. But anyway, yeah, this is where you get the recipe for seed sausage. And while we're here, we might as well purchase some Goosenberg wine because we'll want to start stocking up on that. Anyway, we're out of money. <laughs> so um, actually, you know what? What are the... We could probably... Have you run into a refugee from I wonder if it's better price dog. selling these to the him anymore. or if it's a better price at the uh, St. Septimus market. It's probably around the same price, to be perfectly honest. But you never know. It might be a better price there. It's always, yeah, I, basically, like, if you want to get serious about establishing a trade network, just take a little bit of time and record the purchase price and the sale prices of the various locations in a balance sheet and then highlight the uh, the top uh, spots to uh, sell things and then you're good to go. Want to do business? All right, what do we got the here? 82, 91, 91, 60. Sure. Yeah, you know what? I believe it was better prices at the other, other market. But in any case... Um, I'm just going to sell here anyway, um, just because we're here, and I don't want to walk back. <laughs> so, um, spice, <coughs> pardon me, spices, pelts, amber, and cloth are what we sell here. Um, I will note that here at St. Septimus's Market, the um, purchase price of the goods is pretty hefty. Um, but <coughs> if you're still selling them at the optimum places, you can make pretty good profit with them. But there you go. We've stocked up our goods and we've got a little bit of a surplus left over and we are ready to move on. Probably the next place I will head to is uh, New Asthel and see what they've got there. I'll actually we'll stop off at Marheim. I'll stop off at Marheim first, um, pick up some more goods and uh, make my way to New Asthel. And then we come back down this way, uh, past Marheim, pick up goods if they have them, uh, head to Stormcap, pick up goods there, and then sell at Cortia Scrolls and Silver. And then we just rinse and repeat. We head back up to Stromcap and then uh, to Marheim over to St. Septimus District Market. Though I think it's probably worth it to make the go that little extra distance because it looked like Taverns of Fortune Made gave better prices. So actually, I I'm curious if uh, maybe. Um, They've got good prices for even more goods there. So uh, we'll sell there and then back this way. And there you have it. Do this for a few hours. Accumulate a vast portion, uh, a vast, um, a vast bankroll. And then what you can do is <coughs> just basically start stopping merchants in the street picking up um, 
the supplies that you want from them and start storing them at the traveling posts and basically do this for a few hours basically build up a ton of cash and a ton of resources in reserve and at that point when you feel you're ready when you feel like you've accumulated a vast enough fortune um, that's when you recruit your party and you basically be able to recruit your party of any size. I mean, if you want a real challenge, you could just stick with the one guy and see what you can do with him. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope this was helpful for you guys and I hope this was clear. The video is much longer than I intended it to be, but there was a lot to explain and I wanted to sort of try and detail everything as much as possible. I'm sure I missed... A number of things and if you guys have uh hints or or uh tactics strategies to add to this let me know but this is essentially for me this has been the easiest playthrough of extreme difficulty that i've had so far and it's um it seemed to have um, worked out really well for me thus far so um be interesting late game how it goes but i think with all this cash and um, resources, you'll be able to equip your party with the best possible gear. You'll be able to uh, train them with the best possible, um, the best possible skills from the uh, uh, Brotherhood's training grounds. And yeah, um, this will be a super easy fight. I guess we'll just close it off with this. Might as well. I know it's... Uh... But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate the support for the channel. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Have a great day. Auto signing up. We take what is ours. We take Valerian. We take it all.